A very warm welcome to So This is Thailand. I'm Valerie McKenzie. I'm Johan Wimon Chalau, Swadikra. And I'm Tapani Manawe, Swadika. Now, I understand that Johan wants to do the lead in today about marriages and divorce. Absolutely. What's the story? It was the greatest of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> what? Is, is that the story? <laughs> no, well, what we'd like to do is, you know, it's always good to keep up on other publications. And what's great in the BK, BK Magazine, is that they have a, a numerology section where they give you some interesting statistics. And the one for last week was, in 2010, roughly 285,000 people got married here in Thailand. So that's great, right? But 28% <laughs> of those never made it to their first anniversary. Mm. In fact, 28% got divorced. So lesson to all, be careful. Make sure it's what you want. But you know, did they physically go to that registry and actually sign the papers they were going to get married? Because so many people here say, mm. oh yes, we're going to mm. get married. Then it's a matter of having a service, no official paper, and that's mm. it, you know? So. Well, it's the society, uh, society, like, the a socially acceptable thing to do. Well, that's true, actually. Mm. Sure. So because I don't know how other countries rate, but uh, I know I think the divorce rates are going up higher and higher and higher. Maybe we weren't supposed to be together all of our lives. Who knows? Can I say thank you for that piece of useless information? Always happy to oblige. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, yes. Can we go to something more interesting? Can we go to the talk of the town? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, at the top of the list for the talk of the town today is UNESCO is supporting our one tablet for every one tablet per child policy here. They're saying it's a great initiative that uh, not only students but parents and also professionals should be embracing technology in the learning experience. So it's good to see there. And they actually have their own little project going on, which is a mobile phone to combat literacy, uh, illiteracy rates. Mm. So they are saying, you know, it's technology is here. We should use them as the tools they are meant to be. Uh, I know a lot of the critics are saying out there, well, you don't want it to replace the traditional methods, but I think if done correctly, if you've trained the people, you've trained the teachers, mm. then these things can work. Well, well, I hope so. I mean, we, uh, I joined another program uh, last week uh, with uh, Mr. Adrian and Mr. Tom, and I have to say that we talked about the tablets, and we talked also about the fact that it's very difficult now for people to communicate as they used to. So, you know, I actually have concern that in the tablets in the classroom, if it's managed, it's great. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You go into offices, you go into government departments, the Ministry of Interior is now saying, you know, you are not allowed to go onto Facebook because so many people are watching Facebook all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's going to happen in the schools? I mean, can the teachers actually control the use of these tablets and is it going to really work? I'm sceptical, but if in fact we use them the right way, it'll be good for these kids as they develop. But Teachers, please. Yeah, and children take pick care. up things so quickly as well. Like a five year old that I met the other day, you know, got the phone, just went like this mm. automatic. They You're just like, do it, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So, tablets, UNESCO. Tablets, mm. UNESCO. <laughs> Second on the list is looking at the United States. They're actually going to release a third quarterly stimulus package for here in Asia. And there was some concern that it may adversely affect the strength of the Thai bot. Obviously, they don't want it to get too strong, otherwise it affects our exports and therefore our overall GDP. But according to our deputy, excuse me, yes, our deputy premier, who is also the finance minister, Kun Kitirat, has says that there are policies and procedures in place to help minimize the effect that this stimulus package will have on the region. And uh, you know, along the same lines, the other countries within the region are also looking to help minimize the impact of their exports. Mm. So it's actually kind of interesting. You have the United States releasing a large sum of money to help increase the, the economy here, but in fact, you don't want to increase it by too much, otherwise you have adverse effects on our exportability. Mm. Mm. And also on our bar. Yes, and exactly. And that's going to be quite significant. So I think we're uh, not just us, but countries generally are doing it tough. And then we see what's happening in Europe. We see what's happening in the States. There's got to be the flow on effect. And just talking, even if we looked at the gem and jewellery show that was just held on recently, the numbers going to that show were down considerably. I'm not sure about the sales, but I think that people are still being very conservative. So we need the stimulus packages, but we also need uh, a lot, lot more. All right, next up in talk of the town is, uh, well, 
it's water related, but we're not going to mention the F word, that is the, the flood word. All right, well, the Bangkok's uh, Metropolitan Water Works Authority has done some surveys around the area in preparation of, of massive water that's going to descend on us. And uh, they found that in Nakhonsawan, the water is more turbid than usual, while uh, at the same time, the quality is quite normal for water in the rainy season. As you know, a lot of uh, dirt and silt and runoffs uh, come along when uh, the flood happens. Um, they have prepared compounds of polyaluminium chloride to participate uh, precipitate Pitate. Yes. <laughs> uh, suspended waterborne matter and uh, added chlorine for killing germs and adjusting the quality of water so that it becomes a safe standard. Well, they've, they've done this in the past when we've had not just obviously the, the, the bad flooding, but when there's flooding in general or there's been areas where the water's become, you know, it's churning up, like, like Tara had mentioned, all the silt, all the, all the mm -hmm. sediment that's on the bottom there. Because you really, that's one of the big problems is, it's not just the amount of water, it's what the water's carrying with it. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And I guess that, you know, there's too many, still too many of these factories that are not actually looking after their wastewater, mm. not having the wastewater treatment plants. And uh, it's like yeah. many countries, a lot of work still has to be done. All right. And uh, also in another news, uh, the World Wildlife Fund has uh, come out to caution a proposed dam project that will... Um, take place in one of the national parks in Western Thailand. And they have said that this is going to pose a significant threat to the kingdom's tiger population. Um, near the border with uh, Myanmar, they have captured uh, footage of a wild tigress and two cubs. And uh, this is the, near the proposed dam site. Uh, they said that tigers need large amounts of food, especially when they're nursing their young. So. Uh, the dam project will destroy about 20 square kilometers of National Park, which is home to wild animals, of course, and uh, the things that tigers eat. So uh, this is going to threaten the tiger population. At the moment, there's 300 tigers remaining in the wild, and uh, I think we're in the lead. Uh, the Indo-Chinese tigers uh, under threat from shrinking habitat and lessening mm -hmm. uh, all around. Now, for those of you watching the, the inserts then, I think even if you had your glasses on or your microscope, you still wouldn't have been able to see the tiger in the wild. So you have to use your imagination because uh, it didn't sort of match. <laughs> the reality is, though, that the numbers are dwindling. However, when we look at the tiger temple at Kanchanaburi, one thing that's very impressive is the way that these monks, in fact, are developing these tigers, the tigers we're seeing more and more. And in fact, just recently, uh, I believe a group went there and said, you know, maybe there are too many tigers there. So there's two sides to look at this, one the protected, one the unprotected. But n certainly, I think that all the native habitat is actually suffering. Uh, we look at the number of elephants, you look at the number of tigers, you look at uh, so many things that we had in plenty here is no longer, not just here, but around the world. We'll bring you more on that. I hope we can bring you more also on the tiger temple in Ganchanaburi be just nice to get a different version of the story. We're going to go to a break and then of course we have the story about rice export. We know that the benefit of rice uh, is that we should actually be able to give the farmers a lot more money. It's not happening at the levels it should. We will find out more when we come back after the break. We'll be talking to the uh, president of the Thai Rice Exporters Association. Stay tuned. <laughs> 